welcome to Culture Illiterate, the po- podcast where four friends overthink every theatrically released Marvel and DC movie while a dog barks in the background. I'm one of your hosts, Jake's and Jake, and I am quickly running out of fun facts about myself for this intro. With me are my co-hosts. <laughs> Sal going insane right as you started. It was hilarious. Sal Sal's been quiet and as soon as as soon as it, this is the first time he's really done this. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard him bark this much before during recording. Yeah, I know. Okay, anyway. Uh, okay, should we restart? Should we restart? No, no. no we're we're is, rolling with it. It's just in, introduce man. yourselves. I'm Jason, and I got two tattoos yesterday. You got them today? No, I didn't. What? what? Got them yesterday. Are you, you dead? Yes. Are you fighting oh, the right. death? right. Yeah. It's wait, all blur. Wait, no, I need to. I need to see them. I can tell that one of the ones is the knife on your arm because that one wasn't there before. Well, are we gonna talk about them? I can't. That's blocked by your. Do you wanna? Do you wanna well, talk about them? I can't read. Um, sure, I'll talk about them a little bit. I got. Yeah, because I, I know you got one on your arm because you posted that on your Twitter. and I saw that. Yeah. And then, w- fuck that bitch. Fuck that bitch. The other one. The other one is this one right here. It says, "If winter ends." What's that reference to? Uh, it's a bright eyes song. Bright eyes. Yeah, bright eyes. There. This can also be a wreck for this week. Ha <laughs> ha. Bright eyes. Is, bright eyes is a really good like indie folk band. Uh, they're a great band. One of my favorite bands ever. Um, Connor Oberst, I think, is probably the greatest songwriter ever. He's their singer. He also makes really good solo music. Uh. Which I don't like quite as much as Bright Eyes, but I digress. Um, if Winter Ends is my favorite song by them, it just it's it means a lot to me. And then I got. Did you clarify that that one's on your collarbone? Oh yeah, it's on because my because people can't see that. <laughs> yeah, I forgot for our audio listeners, <laughs> which is all of our listeners. Unless you're on the Patreon, then you get the video. Um, so that's on my collarbone. Um, and then I got on my forearm uh, a knife that says, "I'll just cut my losses." Uh, which is from a song as well uh, called Cut My Losses by Heart Attack Man because uh, it helped me through a very rough time in my life. I don't want to get too specific, but I mean, if you listen to the song, it's pretty clear. <laughs> if you listen to what we said earlier, you can kind of put some pieces together yeah, it's, too. Yeah, it's pretty clear to put the pieces together, but both really sick bands that I that I really recommend. Are you guys just going to sit there? Are you going to say something too about yourselves? I'm Matt, we usually go on a... I know, but you can jump if Matt's slacking off, which is awesome. Matt, you you want to go? Um, Hi. <laughs> just... I'm Matt. Hi. <laughs> no, it doesn't have a fact. Oh my and god. <laughs> my fact is that I learned that the uh the guy who played Arcane in this fantastic movie we just watched called Swamp Thing Two. <laughs> Not so, called Swamp Thing Two, but okay. I know it's a good turn to Swamp Thing. And um I learned that he, Arcane also played in the famous James Bond movie Octopussy. And that's my fun fact. <laughs> okay. Not you usually about yourself, but we'll take it. I guess the fact is that you learned it. <laughs> you learned something new. You learn something new every day, Matt. I know, right? Uh, all right. So uh, I'm Sean. Um, my fun fact is that a teaspoon of semen has a calorie count of five. <laughs> Again, and, usually the facts are about yourself. And uh, that is about myself. I have semen all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite snack. I, I, I just want anyone listening to know that we were we were all ready to record, but Sean was panicking, trying to think of a fact, and he's on his phone saying he's looking, he's looking, and I had no concept of what he could be looking for for a fact about himself. But apparently, he was just googling thing like cum facts. <laughs> and well, you're surprised about that? <laughs> hey, that does have something to do with me. I send Jason cum every single day. Should, should we read the <laughs> the cumiversary? If you if you do, I know we gave background on an earlier episode, but you should run it back to a yeah, quick. Yeah. Synopsis on what the what, so, what what you mean by the cumiversary? Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> let, let's let's tease us to the end of the episode. So no, 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 to no. Listen. Matt, this, I don't this... want to. No, I don't want to uh, circle back to it. Yeah, we don't want to circle back to that. Also, one. Matt, people can you know like if, the, if someone for some reason is like I'm going to stay here. I really want to hear this story. They can just sc- skim through. I know, but that's additional work, and some people are too lazy for that. But it's less additional work than listening to like an hour long podcast. Well, and you're in story. a car. You never know. Mom and dad, stop fighting, please. We're, ter- we're, we're coming now, or we're not coming at all. So <laughs> we're coming now. <laughs> Like Jake said, I think we mentioned this on a previous episode, but for context for anyone new joining us, Sean texts me the word cunt, cum, every day. Cunt? You had a little slip there, my boy. <laughs> cunt. He, he texts me the word cum every day. No context, just, just the word cum. Um, and so this past week, uh, on July 25th, was our cummiversary. 
meaning he had made it a full year, texting me come every day. So now, he sent me quite the story. <laughs> and strap in, because this is long. To commemorate this. It was so long that it, he had to send it in two separate messages. So, uh, it, it, let me pull this up. I got it here. You gonna read it to us? Yeah, I'll read it. Infinite cum. You sit on the toilet to jack off to Mark McGrath, who, by the way, is the lead singer of popular band Sugar Ray. But you begin to cum uncontrollably. After ten spurts, you start to worry. Your hand is sticky and it reeks of semen. You desperately shove your dick into a wad of toilet paper, but that only makes your balls hurt. The cum accelerates. It's been three minutes. You can't stop coming. Your bathroom floor is covered in a thin layer of baby fluid. You try to come into into the sink, but it builds up too fast. You try the toilet. The cum is too thick to be flushed. You lock the bathroom door to prevent the cum escape from escaping. The air grows hot and humid from the cum. The cum accelerates. You slip and fall in your own sperm. The cum is now six inches deep, almost as long as your still erect semen hose. Sprawled on sprawled on your back, you begin to come all over the ceiling globs of the sticky white fluid begin to fall like raindrops giving you a facial with your own cum the cum accelerates you struggle to stand as the force of the cum begins to propel you backwards as if you were on a bukkake themed slip and slide <laughs> still on your knees the cum is now at your at chin height to avoid drowning you open the bathroom door the deluge of man juice <laughs> Reminds you of the Great Molasses Flood of 1919, only with cum instead of molasses. <laughs> the cum accelerates, it's been two hours. Jake and Haley scream in terror as their bodies are engulfed in the snow-white sludge. Sal goes under, with vicious bubbles and muffled cries rising from the goop. You plead to God to end your suffering. The cum accelerates, you squeeze your dick to stop the cum but it begins to leak out of your asshole instead. You let go. The force of cum tears your urethra open, leaving only a gaping hole in your crotch that spews semen. Your body picks up speed as it slides backwards along the cum. You smash through the wall, hurtling into the sky at 30 miles an hour. From a bird's eye, bird's eye view, you see your house is completely white. Your neighbor calls the cops. The cum accelerates as you, as you continue to ascend. You spot police cars racing towards your house the cops pull out their lo their guns and take aim but stray loads of cum hit them in the eyes blinding them the cum accelerates you are now at an altitude of a thousand feet the SWAT team arrives military helicopters circle you hundreds of bullets pierce your body at once yet you stay conscious your testicles have now grown into a substitute brain the cum accelerates it has been two days <laughs> with, with your body now destroyed the cum begins to spray in all directions you you break the sound barrier. The government deploys fighter jets to chase you down, but the impact of your cum sends one plane crashing to the ground. The government decides to let you leave the earth. You feel your gonads start to burn up as you reach the edges of the atmosphere. You narrowly miss the ISS, giving it a new white paint job as you fly past. Physicists struggle to calculate your erratic trajectory. The cum accelerates. The cum <laughs> begins to gravitate towards itself, forming a comet trail of semen. Astronomers begin calling you the comet. You are stuck in space forever, stripped of your body and senses, forced to endure an, an eternity of cum shots. Eventually, you stop thinking. And that is the end. You know, depending on who you are and how immature and broken your sense of humor is, either I'm sorry or you're welcome. This is the internet. Everyone's sense of humor is broken. Yeah. Everyone laughs at the at like things that happen in like three seconds. I think that was art. Oh, I, I say as a biased it. person. If nothing <laughs> else, the, the, the sheer commit, again, we've talked about sean's commitment to the bit before the sheer commitment to the bit to have done that for a year to have texted you the word come every day for a year and then to have come up with that story that n narrative and written that it's nothing if not committed yeah i i was appalled and i all i all i could do was just come well yeah i guess so <laughs> well speaking of sexually charged stories i wanted to recommend smallville this week <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I recently finished watching uh, all ten seasons of Smallville, and I still don't really believe that it's a real television show. Um, especially one that has lasted ten seasons. It went ten seasons. Um, and very quickly learned that its strongest, its biggest strength was its sex appeal, and therefore we should do everything possible at all times to get any lead we can, male or female, shirtless. Um, whether they go undercover as a stripper, whether they just 
always have a way to conveniently have their shirt come off in a fight. Um, and look, I get, look, I, I'm, you know, fair game. You, you do, you do. Um, as long as all the actors are okay with it. But um, it is a remarkably, there's so many bad, I could say a lot more bad things than good things, but also I love it and I wouldn't change anything about it. And I think it's anybody who's even remotely interested in comic books should watch through Smallville. So is it like something that's, obviously part of its time but oh it's very it, dated that's what, that's what gives it its charm it is it is so ridiculously 2000s and it's funny because there's a certain point like the last couple seasons there it like switches on the pivot because it was like it ran from like 2000 i want to say like 3 to 2013 or something like that and the last few seasons it switches to you know when it's in the 2010s all of a sudden it's like oh and it's still very 2010s but it's like suddenly a lot more modern and they have like normal phones and shit like which in time passes in real time i guess for the show so it's not like it's that crazy but it just kind of is funny but yeah it's definitely of its time but i mean tom willing is a great superman uh great clark Kent, i guess i should say and erica durant's great lois lane um it, it's it's worth watching it's the type of thing too it's a very good show to put on like if you like to like have a show on in the background that you don't have to pay like super close attention to while you like do chores or do work or do whatever it's really good for that but having just like recently wrapped it up i, I wanted to throw that out there because it's, it's kind of one of a kind really really campy um really really soapy but overall i'd say it's a lot of fun and very sexy, <laughs> and very sexy. I like, you know who i like in that show what the fuck is his name michael michael rosenbaum great lex luther yeah i like him great lex luther absolutely yeah he kills it a lot of the cast is pretty good in that movie we're not going to talk about the one that led a sex cult um what's up i'm also going to give a recommendation go for it um it's nothing like comic book related it doesn't have to be but um... i was just talking about bright eyes <laughs> <laughs> sorry jason you have to rescind your recommendation it wasn't comic book related my bad <laughs> um it's uh, a manga called uh helk and the context is um h-e-l-k oh h-e-l-c-k c-k okay yep. Yep. and um i haven't finished it yet but so far i've been very much enjoying it it's basically about um this the demon world is in with is having a war with the humans and they were basically holding like a strength contest on uh like basically like recruiting like very strong soldiers in the demon world and all of a sudden a human shows up and er they're one like one of the rulers of the demon world as confused as to why a demon uh no a human is competing in like basically a, de a demon competition and it's just in just one scene he answers it when he wins he won one of the competitions they interviewed him as to why he's entering uh the competition and he, his simple answer is i don't like humans and the crowd erupts everyone fucking loves him and it's just uh it's a very very nice story it's not like too complicated it's only like 100 chapters long which even though like uh, it's in the triple digits each chapter is like 20 pages so you can finish it within like a day and all the characters are very likable i don't want to spoil too much because because it's so short it's pretty condensed so if i like say anything more i'm going to spoil a few things but yeah i recommend it yeah it's um it's de it's like definitely one of those things where like manga is known for like action and stuff like that and it's definitely like not uh the art is isn't definitely isn't like the greatest when it comes to action it's decent but its story is really what propels it forward i was going to talk about go on a rant about like manga action but i'm not going to do that now let's continue hey if you don't want to we, you don't have to um you're always welcome to go on a rant matt they've been as the person who goes back and listens to these back and edits them your rant whenever you go off on something it's absolutely the highlight of the episode every time i'm not kidding like it's very funny and entertaining you have great i know charisma but it takes so much out of me though well you don't you don't have to i'm just saying i'm just trying to sing your praises a little bit speaking of jake editing the the episodes i came down to to our basement just to like you know say hey to jake when i got home from somewhere and i walked into him editing an episode and hearing my own voice talking about sonic being a top <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a uh, episode i'm editing episode two two uh no sorry episode three right now of superman the movie and we discuss uh sonic mario pornography tops and bottoms and that Scenario. was just what i walked into scenario and i was like you know what i forgot that we de did a deep dive into hedgehog sex speaking of people with top energy it's time to talk about a little bit about dick to rock um <laughs> so this episode we are talking about if you if you listen to the past you'll know much of the jason sugar and as he thought we were gonna be talking about something else we were talking about from May 12th, 1989, The Return of the Swamp Thing. 
uh, written by Neil Cuthbert and Grant Morris. Um, disappointingly, not Grant Morrison, who I don't really know how fucking old they were in 1989, but what they were up to, to be honest, um, probably writing still. But anyway, directed by Jim Wynorski and shot by Zorin Hochstatter, uh, H-O-C-H-S-T-A with the two little dots. I don't know what that's called. <laughs> T-T-E-R. Hochstatter is what I'm going with. <laughs> <laughs> the two little dots. Perfect. Honestly, you did another. Perfect. Me trying to say names has been a highlight too. <laughs> I just can't wait till one of us, somebody, one of any of us, does the introduction aside from you. And you guys are always to... welcome to. I said I would do it. I know you just gotta remind like to me. Bef- you guys just gotta remind me beforehand to like. I mean, you have the doc. You all have access to the document where the outline is. It's in the shared Google Drive. But hurry anyway, up, hurry, hurry up. up. We need to get to Dick Rock. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> speaking, <laughs> starring. Once again, Dick DeRock as oh. Swamp Thing. Yeah. Hold it. Stand up, everyone. I'm not standing no, up. I'm not no, one, no one can. Give your applause. Give the... Dick I'll applaud. I'll applaud. I, I'm not in a place that's convenient. Rest, Rest in peace. peace. We did every time his name, when his name came on screen during the opening and closing credits, we did give Dick DeRock a standing ovation. Uh, he deserves wait, is he, it. Wait, is he dead? He is dead. He died in 2009. Oh, that's sad. Poor one. Uh, also, returning from the first one thing movie is Louis Jordan as Arantaran Arcane. Um, and this movie has Heather Locklear as Abby Arcane and Sarah Douglas as Dr. Lana Zarell. So, just to kind of really, really just reconfirming for the audience, I had seen this movie once before, um, probably a couple of years ago at this point. You guys had not, correct? Nope. nope. All right. Nope. I had no idea this movie existed. Same thing for the for the first one. And give it give give just a real quick just a recap for people how just in a sentence or two how you felt about the first Swamp Thing movie. Shit, just awful. Um, despite the one time it had great comedic timing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> fucking awful yeah it wasn't good i would say it was safe to say expectations were low going into this seven oh. layer later sequel says you i had high expectations when you told me it existed i was like i was like basically getting excited excited for the meme but then i saw that fucking poster i saw how buffed he was in that poster and his fucking pearl white smile I know that when I saw that poster, I was like, oh, fuck yeah. Why can't men be more like plants? Hell yeah. Great time. I was actually, I was genuinely, genuinely excited to see this. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to have to add a little, bit, a little bit more because this movie is such an unknown bomb, as if the first one didn't bomb, that the plot synopsis on Wikipedia that we usually kind of walk through and talk about the movie as we go is only the initial, like, setup, and it's only three sentences long. So, um, first sentence, after her mother's mysterious death, Abigail arcane travels to the florida swamps to confront her evil stepfather dr arcane who had been resurrected after his death in the first film it's hard to go on much from that yeah that happened okay that, that is what so happened. what's up matt basically, basically are you gonna try are you are you gonna try and explain the whole plot it sounded like you were getting ready to start to explain the whole plot the thing is i'm trying to remember what happened in like the first half of the plot because a lot of it was pretty forgettable. well let me read the other two sentences okay and then we'll we'll piece it together as we go <laughs> okay. that's I think, the best we could do um you're right it is kind of i mean it's a pretty simple movie um, so in an attempt to stave off the effects of aging and his transformation from the first movie into a monster, Dr. Arcane, assisted by Dr. Lana Zarell, who, um, also signed at Sarah Douglas, if that name sounds familiar, she played Ursa in Superman 2. Much better movie, much better performance, much better character. Yes. Combines genes from various swamp animals and human beings, creating an army of monsters known as Unmen. Dr. Arcane tries to use his stepdaughter Abby in his genetic experiments until she is rescued by Swamp Thing, a scientist previously transformed into a bog creature after a confrontation with the evil doctor and that's what we got we're, for plot we're, synopsis <laughs> i remember what happened during like the first scene so people in the swamp yeah i guess that's so, vague <laughs> so basically oh, what yeah, happened the first peed. first part we ever see is a bunch of soldiers walking in a swamp we don't know the reason why but as they're walking something has followed them and we assume it's swamp thing but then it attacked and it's not swamp thing it's some sort of weird cthulhu creature that has no explanation I as to it why is, it's there. It's one of the unmen. Oh yeah, well, that. But it looks more like a Cthulhu monster. It's it, it, it's just it's credited as Leech Man. Oh, he's a leech. Well, he looks yeah, like an octopus. They, they talk about how he sucks people yeah. dry. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean that was gonna. I knew that was gonna ruin our audio. Well, <laughs> yeah, because it, it's like a big hole, and he's like sucking people's blood out. I thought he looked like a like a crocodile. I thought I thought well, that, it was like it was what, some weird octopus crocodile mix because he's got like the long mouth but he's also got like this weird yeah. looking octopus head. Like the, the eyes they're so far apart and they stick out they look like octopus eyes. Here's the thing it sounds like we're making fun of it but it's a good suit. Oh it does. The first, the first 
do leeches have eyes? I don't know. He did. I mean, these weren't. It wasn't a leech. They're, you know, it's a mix of animal and human DNA. Yep. But yeah, the first thing to say off right off. I want to say right off the bat. First Swamp Thing movie was fucking awful. It's my least favorite movie we've watched for this so far. This movie, well, I wouldn't say it's a good movie. It's kind of a fun B movie, and it is leaps and bounds significantly better than the first Swamp Thing movie, which was directed by fucking Wes Craven. So there's no reason that that should be the bad one, and this should be the mild, actually somewhat weirdly enjoyable, even if it's not good movie. But yeah, much better. And that starts with the costuming for Swamp Thing and for the other monsters is so much better. Well, that's the thing, though. It's a Wes Craven movie. You don't know where you're going to get from him. Yeah, but who do you think... Who, who do you want to put your money on, Matt? Wes Craven or Jim Wernorski? Well, probably Wes Craven, because I cannot pronounce the other name. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. That's oh not the reason God. I have Bill Craven, but fair enough. I go did some Googling. Leeches do have eyes. Yes, they... I, I did that too. I was looking that up. <laughs> Sometimes, I think you'd like to know, there was um, a point where me and Priya would kind of go... We just can't see this, but we'd kind of like, like, kind of like push our lips on another person's any you know their arm their cheek their whatever and just kind of like suction like that and we called it leechly love and i want everybody listening to know about that guys we i want to die run. now I, I, I have a face full of disgust right also now. So if we if we like poke each other with our tongue or like each other we call that lizardly love okay moving on my antidepressants have thing. stopped working and moving i want death on. now <laughs> it's, not a sex thing. it's not a sex thing okay i don't care if it's a sex honestly thing. it may be worse that it's not yeah <laughs> Honestly, anyway, I... what happens is that the <laughs> that leech is. monster starts attacking this rip off pre uh, predator group and starts taking them out one by one. There were a total of three survivors. Um, they two of them went in one direction and one of them went in the other. The two of them ran into, I believe, the people who hired them, and then they were injected what we thought was uh, what was it, like a sleeping agent. Turns out to be something different, which will we get in touch later on. No, and Matt, we thought they were shot because what's her face had a gun and she shot them. And you find out they tranquilized. Oh, yeah, I mean, they were shot. They were shot. The sound effect, like, was like. It's like that thing they use, the sound effect they use for like tranquilizer. Si kind of. and, but you had a silencer on it. I thought it was supposed to be a shitty silencer. Yeah, it was like <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing though. They, she, she, okay, so basically these these two uh, soldiers get out of the swamp. They are then confronted by, uh, what was it? Uh, Arcane's like, Arcane's hit woman, I guess. Minions. 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 One, one, of, one of Arcane's minions who was played by a porn actress. We figured out <laughs> too much to uh, Jason's pleasure. Whoa, whoa. It's, that, <laughs> it's an adult film <laughs> actor, Matt. We put respect on that shit. Yeah, I'm going to pull yeah. up her name real quick because I want to give her some... Oh, it's Monique Gabrielle. That, <laughs> yes. You um, memorized also, it already? already? Also, while we're on the topic, sex work is real work. Yes. Destigmatize <laughs> it, all that stuff. Oh, Yes. The other soldier uh, starts falls over, trips over his glasses, and the glasses fall off. As he slowly tries to look for it, he realizes that the monster has found him. He's about to die. Then, da -da -da -da. not gonna lie, there is like a heroic music cue for every time Swamp Thing shows up on screen, and it's magnificent. I'm, I'm heroic music cue plays, and Swamp Thing comes out and saves the day. He punches the creature several times, and it retreats back into the swamp. And it transitions into perhaps one of the best, uh, what was it? Intro, uh, what was opening it? credits? Opening credits we've ever seen. Like the title card, the way it happened was, uh, basically Swamp Thing get the, gets the man's glasses. He puts it on him. He's looking like, oh my God, it's this swamp monster in front of me. And Swamp Thing just smiles and starts laughing. And then the title card comes in and this plays with what kind of music? It, so it play? so it, it plays. So first of all, the title card comes in with like, all of the like any words that appear on screen and all of the scene transitions all have look like they're made in like windows movie maker um so it like you see s the return of the and then like the word swamp thing like drips down and then it cuts to like a montage of a bunch of really great comic art from um most if not all from the um saga of the swamp thing run from um the art from uh a lot of it's john uh Tottleman and stephen brissett um and it plays born on the bayou by Creedence Clearwater Revival. Um, good song. Like Creedence Clearwater Revival. And very on the nose. Very fun. And I think every comic book movie should have a montage with comic art now. Yeah. With thematic music. During the opening credits. Have an opening credit sequence like that. And then they should do this thing that I believe it was Sean's idea. It's a really crazy, really radical idea. Um, Sean said this when I pointed this out during the movie. That they could then 
actually pay the comic book artists for their work. Gasp. Who, you know, wow. created these worlds we all love. Um, I think that's really novel. Um, so, you know, who who would have thought um, they know. could do that, maybe? Yeah, may- maybe they should. It's a, it's a radical idea. It's a very <laughs> radical idea, I know. Um, also, real quick, mid, mid-movie mid wreck talking about paying creators for their work. Uh, read Public Domain, uh, Art and Writing, all by Chip Zdarsky, about... Um, the one sentence summary without anything else this is vague but it's really great really funny and heartfelt uh, about a comic book creator that was fucked by a major comic book publisher who now makes a shit ton of money off of his creation in movies and doesn't properly compensate any of the people whose work they have effectively stolen and taken advantage of. Hmm. hmm, hmm. Read that. <laughs> oh, moving on. Chips we are then introduced to uh, Abigail Arcane, and basically... It- wait, did you find a plot summary somewhere? Yeah. I oh, okay. It up. Okay, because was, I was going to be so impressed wait, if Matt, you were, like, <laughs> ripping this off, off the dome. Matt, can you say Abigail again? Abigail? You said Abigail. Abigail? It was funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they mostly call her Abby. <laughs> I think he just wanted to call her Abby, but he went Abby Gale. Anyway, <laughs> it was funny. We're introduced to villain's stepdaughter, who doesn't have the strongest introduction as she just rants to her plants about her love life. It wasn't just her I love life. I disagree. I love I think it's a funny introduction, and I stand by Heather Locklear in this movie as Abby Arcane. It's not a comic accurate Abby Arcane, but I don't give a fuck about any of that. I still I still like the character though. She is she is fantastic compared to the uh, I love how fucking bright and, like, silky all her fucking dresses are while she's in the middle of the swamp and everyone's in, like, dirty-ass clothes. I know. Abby Arcane is, like, a badass in this. Yeah. We can get into that a little bit later as the action unfolds. But (laughs) she's, like, she holds her own. I think if if anything, she sets up the tone for everything in the whole movie because it's just goofy fun. That's true. The whole thing's goofy fun and she's having goofy fun talking to her plant. And her co-worker is very clearly fed up with her. And that all the plants have name tags. I love that they all had names. It was hilarious. (laughs) Okay. Okay, so um, she then decides that the best, but the best step to move forward is to, I believe, confront her step or her stepfather regarding what happened to her mother, if I remember correctly. And here, it, as she's riding down to Florida, it transitions from that to like a bunch of like scenes with like these two kids, I believe. Or was that did that happen? Okay, later so on? what so what it was is she comes down and there there is a montage. They kind of go through interspersed her encountering her dad, encountering Anton Arcane, and talking to him. Um, with both the initial um great fight scene of swamp thing fighting the leech monster again saving two kids from it in what is a very funny actually just really genuinely funny intentionally funny i should say fight scene um and as well as it kind of cuts back and forth between swamp things adventures and her reuniting with her stepfather with anton um and then it eventually kind of comes together when she upset with anton leaves goes into the woods into the swamp um and then those two like hicks try to like rape her. Um, they're they're there's they're a little cavalier with attempted sexual assault in this movie, which isn't great. But though they do get beat up, but they do you know it's not the word you it know works. it's not that you can't it's just you know it's always tough touchy subject. <laughs> um, but he and then Swamp Thing on his you know fucking patrol or whatever rescues Abby and they immediately hit it off every time he is needed he shows up when kids are that guy yeah exactly when kids are about to get that dog in him uh by a leech monster (laughs) when (laughs) kids are getting sucked by a leech monster who's there for them no that that pause was crazy (laughs) this is the thing when i edit these episodes i like to go in and if there's any like kind of random pauses i'll just cut them out it trims the episode down a little bit makes it flow a little better i'm leaving that pause in no he (laughs) that was a crazy i may cut out leech monster <laughs> oh, you fucking monster. He said the kids are getting sucked by a leech monster. <laughs> also, what we're talking about monster attacks, it's also worth noting how much better the swamps look in this movie. If you recall from our Swamp Thick episode, we all hated how the swamp was bright, how it was not tightly packed, how it was really, really boring and unscary looking. This swamp is oppressive. It is tightly packed there are brightly colored flowers but also it is dark and dirty and it actually looks like a swamp and is you know a good setting for a swamp thing movie so i just wanted to fucking talk about that because it's such a step up the first one thing movie that swamp it looked like i just won the canoe in there like it looks so nice to just you know just canoe around nice relaxing this one it actually seems like like a real swamp that 
I don't want to go near because it probably smells really bad. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I feel like the first one had more of like a like obviously Wes Craven was the director. I feel like it had more of like it was more of an attempt at being more horror and oriented, but the swamp setting did not have that at all. And then this one definitely was not so much uh, trying to do anything horror related, and the swamp looked much more scary and intimidating it was trying to be it's like they flipped it a little bit you know like they, the the movie was trying to be fairy with Wes Craven and then the swamp sucked and then this one was just trying to be goofy Power Rangers and then they make the swamp scary <laughs> Very <Power Rangers. laughs> yeah it, it is weird because in that with the, the body horror of the Unmen is so much better than all the creatures in the first like oh 100 it, it's so much goofier than the first one but also when it wants like to be we're being so praiseful I feel like of this movie it's an, I wouldn't call this a good movie I but compared to a a lot of the junk we've been watching and also like as opposed to to the first one even it's fun it's yeah it's fun to watch like the movie. first the first one's really bad but it's also just like boring to watch because not much happens this is like entertaining I, th- I think I'd compare it in the same way to Venom for us, <laughs> except Venom's at a higher, I hold in much higher regard, where it's it's a bad movie, you know inherently that it's a bad movie, but it's so much fun to watch. Right, like, it it is, like, in terms of the artistry, there's not, like, the care put into it the same way, or at least not at the high level of, like, certain, like, of, like, very well-acclaimed movies, but it's still, it's so goofy and it's so good at being bad that it's just so you can't help but watch it and laugh and have a good time. I know I was actually paying attention to the film. <laughs> That's a rarity for Matt for our for our listeners. But yeah, so okay, so basically, uh, something like saves these two kids who were um, caught in a very awkward situation uh, looking at porn mags, and uh, it there. There was a reference to the only good stunt done in the first movie, which is basically setting someone fire and then jumping into the swamp water. Do you remember that scene, Sean? They play it back in this one, yeah, too, when yeah. they flash yeah. back to his origin. Ah, Swamp so Thing's origin. We get to see both of those scenes of people on fire jumping into water. I know, right? And oh, wait, I forgot to see the the reason why he was on fire is because uh, the Cthulhu man or, or leech man swings like a metal pole toward like a like a gas uh, gas pipe. Oh no, gas canister. Gas, gas canister. Yeah, and everything inexplicably blows up in this movie. And it everything explo- everything explodes. There's a chain there's a domino effect explosion. It went from the well the mobile home to multiple cars. And even though the leech man was seemingly was like near like the middle of these explosions, he still caught on fire while something was perfectly fine. And it's magical. And I don't know, like the effects in this movie are so much better. Not just in the costume design, but the, like the use yeah, of I don't know, the, the, vis- the, 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 like, the practical stuff is fine, but I don't know about the like visual effects is some fucking window shit. Here's the thing. They're not, they're good, not good, but they're, but exciting. they're exciting. I don't I mind really just big explosions here and there, as long as as, yeah, as long as like, there's 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 two there's two types of effects in this movie. They have they have one practical effect that they know how to do, which is exploding things, and boy, do they do it a lot. And they have <laughs> one like like computer jet, like I don't want to call it CGI that makes it sound too fancy effect in this movie, and it's like lightning bolts, and that's it, which is come up like they slam metal poles together, and there's lightning bolts, and Swamp Thing's regenerating, and there's lightning green lightning bolts, and th- these are the two things they know how to do: the one in post and the one practical, and that's it. That was that was the joke I made was it was like they like talked to the stunts and VFX department and they were like we can do one thing we we can do that thing really well and, and we, we can do it as much as you we want we can do it as many times as you'd like but that's all we got <laughs> okay then moving on for that then uh, Abigail nearly gets uh, taken advantage of by these two men who by these two hillbillies and then uh, Swamp Thing da 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 saves comes to save the day he beats up these two hillbillies they interact a little bit. But then Abigail is taken away by uh, our king's hench- henchmen, right? Or henchwoman. Henchmen, mercenaries. I mean, the- mercenaries, whatever. People. Anyway, uh, Swamp Thing is shot several times. And after being shot several times, they then, like, threw a grenade at him. And then he explodes into little tiny pieces. And then we get to the part where, as Jake mentioned, we see, like, his body parts going into, like, a, like a pipe going into our king's house. But, like, for some reason, instead of just, like, g- glowing red, it's just 
green lightning coming off of the swamp uh, swamp thing it's really weird but you know lightning's cool so i i guess that's what that's i guess that's their thought process and honestly like like we were saying the plot's pretty simple from that point forward it's basically just like the rest of the movie is Ant anton arcane and his people trying to find a custom combination of abby and or swamp thing depending on who they have captured at the time with like a little subplot in um dr zarel kind of falling out of love with arcane and realizing he's crazy and stuff like that but it's basically just a that back and forth while swamp thing and abby fall in love until ultimately swamp thing rescues abby and arcane dies well i don't think it's because zarel realized that he was crazy it was probably because he was willing to yeah exactly he was willing to sacrifice well, I mean, okay fine Sacra. but i think that's part of him, her Sacra. like falling out it's like sacrifice this movie one of the things I really enjoyed about it is unexpectedly, um, on top of, I don't know how to say words, unexpectedly, um, on top of like the use of comic art in the opening credits, um, as well as the last shot of the movie is art from the Saga of the Swamp Thing run, and it has like, the end on the screen, it's kind of great, I love it. There's like a lot of actual like references and illusion or inspiration pulled as different as this is wildly from Alan Moore um, and Taliban and Brissett's Swamp Thing Bissett. Sorry, it's Bissett. I always throw an R in there. Um, or Bissett. I don't know. But names. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's a tradition. Me not saying things right. Swamp Thing Run um, with a uh, reference to issues 41 and 42 of Saga of the Swamp Thing is a great issues um, involving there's a old plantation in the swamp um, that they're filming a kind of exploitive TV show at. And there's ghosts of these um, formerly enslaved people. And Swamp Thing kind of has to help the ghosts find peace, basically. It's it's wonderful, wonderful issue. Um, definitely ahead of its time. And there's a... It's just an offhand reference, but an offhand reference to rumors of a plantation in the swamp and ghosts there. There's the addition... Um, one of the nice things about it is the first Swamp Thing movie, he's just kind of a strong swamp monster. He gets, like, actual swamp powers in this. Their effects are limited, so it's not like he can, like, control vines or anything, really. But as Matt mentioned, he, like... After he, get, he takes a fucking grenade to the chest and then, like, regenerates somewhere else, goes through tubage, and that's something that, like, it came about in the, um, aforementioned Swamp Thing run, as well as him, him, Abby initially dies at the end of the movie, um, Abby also, prominent part of that run, very different, but being brought into this movie, um, and he resurrects her, him having some form of healing ability is also present, but it was really nice to just get to see Swamp Thing be a little bit more supernatural, have more to him than just being a swamp monster, as well as it seeming like they, he talks about how Holland died and he was reconstituted by plants, um, which isn't quite the the redone origin from the anatomy lesson issue of the Moore run, uh, where they redefine what Swamp Thing is. But it's it's more in line than just him being straight up Alec Holland. And then most importantly and notably, there's the sex scene. <laughs> Issue 34 of Saga of the Swamp Thing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful single issue where Abby and Swamp Thing are in a relationship and, you know, him being a swamp monster, they can't exactly have sex, but they both would like to. So Swamp Thing generates psychedelic plants from his own body that he feeds himself and Abby and they basically trip balls and through tripping balls, they experience what it would be like to have sex together. And it is a beautiful, if you look, like, look, issue 34, beautiful, beautiful art in that issue. And it's just, it's a super trippy issue because um, it's literally just them on a fucking acid trip the whole time. So they just like do ayahuasca together basically but for them it's having sex and it's one of those things that like of all the things to pull from and adapt i don't know how they came across doing that but i absolutely love and respect so much that they decided we're going to try to do the the acid trip sex scene not really a sex scene sex scene how many times have i said sex scene um you know what you you should change it you should change what you you call it it should be <laughs> I'm saying this only because I saw this on Twitter today and it was the most disturbing thing. One person continually described sex scenes as mating scenes. That's upsetting. And I was like, uh, that's uncomfortable, man. You know, I, real quick, I can see Matt's computer screen from where I'm sitting and I just see bottles of Lister. Yeah, because I was going to move on. Oh, you're talking about how he looked at oh, Lister? You're talking about the, about the <laughs> Then when he cut... Because uh, basically there was a scene where um, uh, Arcane basically explains to one of the scientists... I forgot, he's like Ace Mask, right? 
That's the guy who plays. Ace Mask plays the one, the non, not Dr. Zorrell, the yes, other guy. exactly. I can't think of the other scientist's name, but he's played by a guy named Ace Mask. Awesome name. And he basically explains how he, he's, he's willing to, uh, he is willing to sacrifice Zoel for the sake of, you know, the, the mission. And she overhears this and becomes distraught. She turns on the faucet and out comes Swamp Thing in the form of Listerine. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a, it's just green liquid and we're just like oh my god mouthwash is coming out of the bathtub but yeah it turns out to be swamp thing and as he slowly starts to regenerate inside the bathtub uh what was it i think abigail was like what was happening to her she was up she had been recently captured yes. and he helps her initially flee until so he helps her flee and then they have sex in the forest like i talked about you gotta talk about that escape scene though where they got a car oh and he drives yeah Ab abigail gets uh, car keys from Zoelle because Zoelle knows that uh, Arcane doesn't love her. And basically, she runs into Swamp Thing. They, Swamp Thing says, we're going to escape. And then uh, Abigail shows him the keys. And he's like, nice. Immediately a montage of him going in the car and changing gear and <laughs> putting his foot on the gas pedal, swerving off. It's hysterical. The scene, seeing a guy in a giant green suit <laughs> drive, driving a truck. This is the scene where I wanted to talk about Abby being a badass, too. Because oh, yeah. She's initially, like, in the little, like, prison. Oh, she fights her way from rapey mercenary guy. Yeah, and then, the, like, the guy who's supposed to be his top mercenary, she, like, doesn't completely kick his ass, but fights him and keeps him away and gets away before getting caught again. And then... She breaks his nose, right? Yeah, she, well, she, like, hits him in the nuts because she's like, you should get a vasectomy. <laughs> Literally says, she's, she says something about, like, your favorite kind of they're talking about like some science stuff for surgery yeah. she's like you know my favorite kind of vasectomy and then and then hits him in the nuts hits him in the face breaks his nose and then even after that like she gets held captive again then swamp thing gets her out and then they get in the car and she's still like she's killing tired. bitches she's she has a gun and she starts shooting at the people as swamp thing drives away she's a badass in this um, she's a... this is also where i want to talk about the cheapest part of the movie which is definitely the sound effects where this movie a first of all the movie doesn't know how guns work they reuse anytime someone fires a gun. There's a really, really cheap, re often reused same gun sound effect. But there seems to be no there seems to be no indication to like the kickback of the gun or the muzzle. Even the people who are supposedly being shot, no, there's no holes in. They act like they've been shot very poorly, but there's no holes in their clothes. There's no blood. There's no indicate like you would. There's no impact. There seems to be no understanding of how guns work. Their aiming is never where they're shooting, and they also don't know real quick. Don't know how inhalers work because the other doctor takes an inhaler frequently and he never closes his lips around it. He does it twice really quick, doesn't hold it in, doesn't close his lips around it. And it's like doesn't breathe. In. Dude, nobody could have just taught him how to use an inhaler. Like he just does it and then keeps talking like he doesn't hold it in or inhale. It's called an inhaler. And he doesn't even put it in his mouth. Right. Yeah. He just, I, I it don't just seems think like he uses uses it to uh, clean up his bad breath. If anything, <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like breath spray almost. They also they also reuse every time there's lightning. They use the same exact lightning sound effect over and over and over. Again. I I was gonna mention that. Yeah, there was there was an establishing shot where there was lightning going off, and they use the same lightning effect over and over and over again. I I don't think you guys understand. All of their money went to the explosions and nothing else. Well, the costume design. As I oh, said, and the costume. You're as right. As I said, they could do one thing. <laughs> they went to explosions and costume design. Everything else got slashed. Sound effects. We can only afford one, and it's royalty free. <laughs> and and it's actually just our intern farting that we <laughs> we put some filters on it and EQ'd it so it sounds like thunder. Oh yeah, and the, after they escape, it leads up to the wonderful sex scene that Jake has mentioned before. He get something gets distracted by the two kids again because they got they messed around uh something too much and they got captured by the uh arcane's mercenaries and he, he takes something takes the bat that one of the kids owns it just starts whacking all of this of the mercenaries and it's pretty awesome and there's one of my favorite scenes is where uh basically the kids have to take a, a picture of swamp thing because if you do, you get like ten thousand dollars, I believe. They're they're speculating they heard about someone who took a picture of Bigfoot and got that much money, so they want to try to get a picture of him, yeah. and get a Corvette. They asked one thing if he wants to take a picture. He said yes, only if one of you takes a picture with me. And uh, they basically they make the 
the they make the chubby kid go he makes like a very uncomfortable face like he's it looks like he's his it looks like his head's shrinking into his neck because his double chin comes out very clearly i i I realized we never mentioned the point when they were inside like the the hut before it exploded the the what was it it was like a trailer thing it was it was the, it was just like some kind of like well where they were some in it, kind of run down yeah that the yeah one it was like some little run down home where he grabs the bowling ball and the one kid go that's my dad's bowling ball and then it just smashes through the window <laughs> and apparently there's this small chubby kid through it i'm like how did he throw that that hard <laughs> and the timing Adrenaline. on that was so great <laughs> funny it's actually this movie's actually pretty funny when it wants to like not not so bad it's good funny well, I'm not gonna say that never happens. It's like actually funny. Yeah, there's definitely times where it's just ridiculously bad, and it, you can't help but laugh. But there, there are solid jokes. <laughs> I I think it has a lot more solid like humor to it than the first one did with the indirect humor of something going ah. Yeah. <laughs> like Arcane has a few solid lines too. Like not like comedic lines, but like actually like menacing lines. There's a couple of them, and that's the thing though. Is like there was. Remember we t- we talked about one of them. I f- I yeah, they ask him. Uh, Abby asks Arcane if he sold his soul to the devil, and he said, "Let's just say he has a lease and an offer to buy." Like, Cold. That's the thing, though. Is like everything's improved from the last one. The script is tighter. Well, you know, it's not good, but still, it's better than the last one. And the effects are much better. The costume design is better. the The score is actually like you know passable, which is shocking and uh yeah it's mind-boggling that this is like an like a total upgrade as a, of a sequel to a, like a shitty west craven movie wrap wrap up the cro- run through the rest of the plot real quick okay, um and okay. let's wrap it up all right for all that right. and then we'll because i think i want to get through that and get on to the actual thoughts okay so <laughs> a- after abigail and swamp thing have psychedelic sex swamp thing goes to save the kids after he saves the kids abigail gets kidnapped again and uh swamp thing tries to go see who did it turns out it's arcane Ooh, look at that it's arcane and he basically right in front of them like swerves out of the way and i'm just thinking maybe you could go after them they're, they're like they're they're right there but no uh he lets arcane escape and arcane basically goes back to his home and he like totally fortifies it and then he t- puts his master plan to work basically taking all of abigail's life force into him making him immortal and then uh we see swamp thing like basically breaking in and as that's happening uh the process is complete or so it seems turns out that zor el sabotaged the whole process and because of that uh arcane shoots her and apparently how guns work in this movie is if you get shot once doesn't matter where you get shot at you instantly die so after so well she gets shot uh we but swamp thing comes in and he sees that uh abigail is nearly it's lifeless he becomes angry he starts like beating uh beat up an arcane and then uh, when arcane was lying on the floor right suddenly the door bursts open behind him crushing his legs turns out to be uh one of the former scientists who was uh what was it poisoned not poisoned uh drugged by Zorel in like an earlier scene and he it, it was actually the other scientist the ace mask guy and he turns into uh basically an alien like do you imagine like the stereotypical like gray aliens with like the large heads and foreheads just make that just give him like regular eyes and make hit make the skin tone like normal human color and every time he gets hit his giant head jiggles <laughs> <laughs> but it kind of looks sick i like I the know. whole thing it's I'm, like I'm, a... sure, I'm sure it wasn't intentional but i fucked with oh, it was so funny when he gets punched and he like his head goes back the <laughs> the the freaking head like goes forward and it looks like he has no eyes it looks like a black line and it's hilarious like it, it's just like a jello mold like like when you shake the plate that jello's on and it just wiggles like that's what his head's like which speaking of which i loved the, the delicious taste of jello you need to stop with this fake sponsor bit <laughs> no <laughs> I, I i'm afraid the next episode i'm like what fake fake <laughs> i'm not um it's funny but i want to say so he defeats the the alien looking scientist and he also defeats 
rapey main mercenary man in the most satisfying way possible after he makes more rapey comments he takes one of the guy's own grenades pulls the pin drops it in his shirt and throw and the guy's just like oh shit or something like that throws him and he blows up and it's great it's very satisfying he just goes oh shit and then he fucking blows up it's so funny well bring bring us home matt so then after all this happens he takes up abigail and gets out of the laboratory arcane doesn't even bother trying to crawl out of there even though he his whole his whole point is that he wants to live forever and yet he doesn't even try to get out of the laboratory maybe because his leg is stuck in like the door the alien guy pushed down but it did, okay maybe due to the effects it didn't look heavy at all i think his leg was broken but it's still weird that he didn't make any effort he seemed to just give up exactly. he just stares at swamp thing as he walks out of the laboratory and then it looks like he gives no shits as like the fire consumes him which is actually pretty funny the way it was shot and then we cut to a uh, swamp thing and uh in like a well in the swamp area where he uh what was it just like heals uh abigail's body yeah he resurrects abby um and tells her that there could be consequences but he's not sure what and she's like uh, well, I guess I'll just stay with you and find out. And then the, and the, know, the consequence we saw was a little tiny flower grows on her very clean feet in a fucking swamp. Well, let's not get into that. Matt, you don't understand. For in defeat, there are some feet that, shots. That, that, they, it was there for a reason. There's free feet in this movie. Mm -hmm. Then that's not all, because this is also, finally, the first movie, the first Marvel DC movie to include a post credit scene after the initial round of credits, which are brilliant like re shots of the actors from the movie just like looking at the camera um you have a scene of the kids trying to sell a photo of swamp thing that they took um trying to sell it and then arguing over who gets how much money no it was because they, he they couldn't get the money the they didn't in. get the money they're trying to get the film developed but they didn't have they forgot to put the film in so yeah. they had no pictures yeah they and they were they're arguing and the kid basically tells tells the other kid like I, I didn't consider you a friend anyway yeah you were mean they were mean to each other they were um uh, they, they, they actually kind of made me laugh a few times i'm not gonna lie i was like oh these kids are gonna be so oh, yeah. annoying and then i was like oh wait no they're kind of funny the chubby kid was so loud and he annoying. was Either, like, it felt like he was screaming every single time but the overacting from both yeah of them the dynamic fun. between the two of them was just funny also the the shot of after swamp thing takes ab is walking away from the mansion as it explodes and burns down and there's a singular statue in the center frame that's still up while everything burns down around in the darkness of the swamp and then it kind of pans to swamp thing walking away from the back holding the lifeless body of abby before he resurrects her cold as shit really cool shot like actually really nice um good lighting like it was kind of crazy the cinematography was so weak like the, the during the beginning shot where we see the guys like that's to see like the rip off predator guys in the swamp the camera was so fucking shaky <laughs> I don't know how it became like. And you could make a you could make a case, and I'm not saying it's the right decision that they're going for the panic of the people getting attacked by an unseen monster. But the panic what? wasn't set yet. Most of them were pretty calm. It was. Just, oh, I I agree with you. I'm just being an asshole. <laughs> I was gonna say playing devil's advocate, then I remembered what's the difference. Um. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, there, that that is a really good shot though at the end like the the the, the flames lighting swamp things back as he walks off with abby which is actually in a more happy sense was what the poster looks like him carrying her like that um but yeah that's the return of the swamp thing guys how about that, yeah, that. it was definitely better than i expected same met my expectations even better than i remembered it being from when i had previously watched it i remember being like oh it's kind of fun but but i liked it a little more this time i did expect it to be better than the west craven swamp thing low bar yeah very low bar so it, it it did pass that bar and then some well we do have to consider what we're coming from which is uh weeks of bad movies the last five movies including this one that we watched go superman 3 supergirl superman 4 how no sorry howard the duck i believe no superman 4 then howard the duck oh my god it, i think it was, it was howard the duck then superman 4 because we did yeah. super yeah, yeah howard the duck superman 4 and then um this 
So, you know, we're not we're on a bit of a cold streak. Yeah, which I feel like is good because then when we start getting into better movies, yeah. we'll appreciate them get, more. When we getting into better movies, you're already watching a better movie. Yeah, but the last movie you like enjoyed enjoyed that I that we watched was like Superman. Oh, yeah. The last oh, one that'd be like it is a good movie. I agree. That I would definitely wholeheartedly recommend. Now, to wrap things up, um my favorite thing is probably the dynamic between Swamp Thing and Abby. I just think it's really funny. It's kind of ridiculous. It's got this fun little rom-com thing to it. But it, it, it's just funny because he talks like a human but looks like Swamp Thing. The suit's pretty good. But he has like human eyes and teeth. And she's just like, I want to fuck a plant. She says in the beginning. She says the tagline in yeah, the beginning. Yeah. which meant more, more like exactly. plant. And she like no hesitation right away and, and like is like, yeah, I'm down. I'm going to fuck this plant. I'm going to commit my life to you. I want to live in a swamp with you. Um, and I fuck with it, and I think Heather Locklear crushes it, and I think Dick Durock crushes it. Um, Dick Durock crushes Honestly, me. this movie's a lot of fun. Um, the least favorite thing is probably the some of the cheapness of the sound effects, to be honest. And it just kind of... It, it, it is funny, but I'm not going to act like it's not bad. Some of the some of the effects, some of the sound effects, some of the, the guns. Um, the man not knowing how to use an inhaler, which is an effect, but I was just thinking of stupid things. Um, to be honest... Um, Again, I couldn't honestly tell you this was a good movie, but I don't hate it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there and I'm going to say I would recommend it. I would recommend it with the caveat that I think you should watch it with friends. I think it would be even better if you watch it um, with alcohol or, you know, weed or just, any know, substance substance of your choice. Um, but to be honest, I think it's kind of a fun time. It's like a fun B-movie creature feature. Um, Power Rangers vibes, as Sean mentioned. And it's... I think it's worth checking out, especially if you have a few in you or something like that. What about you guys? Um, I think, well, this isn't my favorite part, but I do want to mention, uh, I th- overall, I didn't think the music was mind-blowing or anything, but there were certain points where I did really enjoy um, the score of the movie. In particular, I really liked the scene where um, uh, Arcane is playing the organ. I'm a sucker for a good organ part, and I thought that music was was very interesting and nice to listen to um the best part i think is to me it was just so, so nice to see like an improvement on like the set and costume designs like it was nice to watch a swamp thing movie where the swamp actually looked like a swamp and not just like a lake at a park and it was like dark and mysterious at times and you know swamp thing actually looked good i hate to interrupt you but real quick i wanted to because you're talking about the music just shout out chuck serino um did the music for the movie and also worth noting um production design by rob wilson king set decoration by frank galine and costume design by vicky grafe um just because those are all things we praised a lot so i wanted to throw their names in real quick sorry yeah, continue. So you said chuck chuck serino c-i-r-i-n-o yeah i thought the music was pretty interesting at points i enjoyed it but, uh, yeah, I think the set design just, as compared to the first Swamp Thing movie especially, just was much, much better. And and not just better, but good. Like, it was good set design at a lot of parts. Um, my least favorite part is probably, I mean, we mentioned bad and repetitive graphics and sound effects, but... I think specifically the lightning just pissed me off because it's there's it's like why is Swamp Thing having lightning as he's going through these pipes and down the the faucet like the the lightning just seemed so random at times so that was probably my least favorite just because it pissed me off a little bit. Uh, that being said, I also would recommend this again. Bear in mind that it's not exactly a good movie, but it's a fun time. It's a fun, bad movie, you know, if you watch with your buds, like Jake said. And yeah, that's all I got. We're going to skip over Matt. So, because he touched his laptop. Y'all don't have to go in such a rigid order. As I was going to say, I wholeheartedly recommend this movie. After, like, the shit streak that we've been on these last few weeks, this is... The, the fact that this turned out to be entertaining, at the very least, is such a... Such a... Like, it's such a breath of fresh air like i can actually enjoy myself for once and holy shit like despite like all its drawbacks like well jason and jake said before the sound effects and occasionally the score everything else is pretty solid like um the custom design and everything we mentioned before and the, they like the effects 
and it just didn't take itself too seriously it was a lot of fun there was a lot of good laughs in there and yeah i give it a thumbs up i give you a thumbs up matt thank you um yeah this is definitely one of the movies um (laughs) i i honestly still think i liked it it was a fun goofy movie like i said it was like really similar to how how our friend group views venom and that it's we we all know it's a not the best made movie ever but like it's a fan it's a fun time if anything um so like my favorite part i want to say my favorite part is just the i don't know if it was on purpose and i i i assume some of it had to be but like with the goofy nature the comedic timing of this movie was hilarious at points like the bowling like i said the bowling ball going through the fucking window <laughs> it's my dad's bowling ball it's smash um but i i'd have to say like just the goofy nature of it definitely is what makes it a lot more fun to me and makes it a lot more enjoyable and makes it something that's like easy to digest also helps that it's like only an hour and 30 minutes long so that like definitely helps speed things along and doesn't like the the movie doesn't at any point i feel overstay its welcome uh my worst thing i i want to say that it's like not swamp thing the way that he looks but the way that uh he talks it was monotonous. I fucked with it. Slow, like Maybe how normal it sounded. It, it's like he. It, it, <laughs> Hi, I'm normal. It just he did not change his tone at all. It was always the same. He'd laugh and then keep the same tone. So it's like somebody laughing and then getting really serious. And <laughs> I do agree that that was weird, but I I thought I found it enjoyable and funny. I thought it was funny, but it just, like, with everything else, it was just so strange. It was a weird choice, for sure. Well, the thing is, is, like, it already establishes that it's not going to take itself too seriously, so I didn't mind that he speak like a normal person, despite looking like a plant. I I think it's also funny to contrast against that with everybody else, like, definitely doing a bit of overacting, and then you have him just sitting there with, like, the most monotonous way he could read a line. He's just sitting there like, yo. Can we also talk about how he has, like, the brightest pearly whites well it's so creepy i'm i like the suit honestly i don't think it looks terrible if anything like i like that they have the nose bridge and everything and you get all of that detail in it but like his eyes look way too human you can obviously tell like where they painted green on his face and it's like moving and then his lips and his mouth like it's just being able to see his eyes move and see his the inside of his mouth just makes me go like oh like it just makes me feel uncomfortable looking at it's that it's not as bad as the first one though um but uh to to top mine off i'm just gonna say that like yeah i, de- I definitely think i'd recommend it honestly i think it's definitely worth a watch just for the funsies i, I definitely agree you it's it, this would be so much fun and inebriated i love this so much well, can we circle back to some drunk watches sometime guys what? can we circle back and oh, drunk oh fuck watches? yeah like, enough of the fuck ju- yeah. on our own time oh, yeah. drunk yeah. Watches, we can please. go back through our whole entire thing what did we recommend for each one and how did we recommend it so let's see which ones we drunk recommended i i'm not personally i'm i'm recommending i mean you can do my, my i myself i'm gonna say recommend or not but i do with the caveat of absolutely yes drunk would enhance this um, oh yeah i seriously i had a blast watching this one with you guys and talking about it this is i had a lot of fun this week um so thanks guys <laughs> against all odds the return of the swamp thing going four for four on rex you can you can throw an asterisk on the rex say oh, we advise being with friends being intoxicated whatever but four for four the return of the a swamp rex thing rex. that's what i'm saying they, it's still they yes. turned it around which is impressive exactly you love to see a comeback it's one those, story it's one of those scenarios where the sequel is better than original right. right on on the same level as episode five star wars <laughs> <laughs> This motherfucker was returning to the of the Swamp Thing the Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> uh, that I think that is the first time what on this planet that, that anyone might have has been compared the those two movies. That thing Matt's ever said. Well, um, the I'm sincerity bad. in his voice. In that truly insane note, thank you um, to Alo for our artwork. You follow him at Vodemort um, on Twitter, V-O-D-M-O-R-T-E. Uh, you can follow me on Letterboxd for Jake Walter 98 If you want bad movie opinions, I will have a list up too of every podcast movie we listen to um talk that we talk about ranked so if you're curious in that jake walter 98 um jason 
if you somehow didn't know, makes our intro outro music. Jason, yeah, I shit. make the intro outro music. Yeah, you do. From a song called Pins and Needles that should hopefully be out soon. It's going to be on an EP I'm putting together. It's going to be four songs called Cult Classic. Listen if you'd like. I make music under the name The Upsides. Um, don't know when that EP will be out. I'm hoping late September maybe, but I'm not putting a date on it yet. Um, yeah, upside the upsides pa on Instagram, the underscore upsides pa on Twitter, and my SoundCloud is just the upsides. So if you want to give it a listen, go for it. All right, and if you're interested in continuing to listen to us, uh, you can follow us at illiterate underscore pod for Twitter and Instagram. You can reach us at culturallilliteratepod at gmail dot com. All episodes are going to be up on the YouTube channel as well as Anchor, uh, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. The channel name is Culturally Illiterate Podcast. Episodes are bi-weekly still, so uh, catch up for it with us in two weeks for a movie we've all been waiting for. The Return of Swamp Thing. 1989's Batman. Thank you for listening. We'll talk with you again next time. Yay.